plant community my name is Pam and if you're new to this channel welcome and welcome to this colorful Friday segment where I take an opportunity to showcase one plant that's just add a pop of color into my sea of green so the color so the plant that's actually taking the spotlight this Friday you guys is the peperomia guinea isn't it beautiful it's commonly known as the Calistifolia, and this plant is actually from the Piperacea family, where it has about like a thousand varieties of the particular species. Now, of course, you can see for obvious reasons why I selected this plant to showcase the Colorful Friday segment, because of the beautiful greenness of the leaves. It's different shades. You've got light green and then the dark. And then you have that beautiful creamy color topped off with that beautiful sharp pink. And then not to mention the beautiful pink thickness of the stems. It's a very beautiful plant. And if you have this in just an area, like I said, and you see a green, this plant will definitely pop out at you. Now this plant is also a slow grower. But when it does really take off, it has the potential to actually grow one foot in height and width, which would make this a plant, a very wide plant. So you want to make sure you definitely have the room to showcase this beauty. So let's just get straight into the care, shall we? Now, as far as the light, we want to give this plant bright and moderate indirect light. Uh, bright light will have the potential to burn the leaves. Now, as far as the temperature, this is... I guess a tropical plant so you want to make sure that this plant is in an area where the temperature is not going no lower than 50 degrees Fahrenheit and you especially want to pay attention to that, to that in the winter time but in its more, most vibrant and thriving conditions it could be between somewhere between 68 and 78 degrees um, Fahrenheit and I say 68 degrees is probably maybe the normal uh, temperature in our home so this plant will definitely do good under that condition as well now as far as the water you guys you want to make sure um, that the soil has completely dried out before you give it a good drink now this plant is very sensitive to water it can be um, rotted at the base if you water on the top so for me I do do bottom watering so I usually, uh, I actually put some water in here and I just sit it back into this cash pole and let it soak up the water. Um, I'm a little scared the water from the top because like I said, it could actually uh, damage the base of the plant. It'll actually start rotting at the base of the plant. So I would recommend you actually doing a bottom water when it comes to this plant. Now as far as the soil, you guys, this... Uh, you want to let the plant dry out, like I made a mention of, um, and you want an airy soil mixture, but you want to also try to retain some moisture. So I would recommend about 60% of your regular planting medium and 40% of perlite. Now, I've had this plant for maybe like a couple of months, and it does have like a peat moss type of soil with uh, perlite in here and it seems to be doing well and it seems to love it. Now as far as uh, repotting you guys, uh, Peperomia, their root systems, they like to stay cramped. Um, so I wouldn't really um, repot anytime soon, possibly maybe every two years, but for optimum growth for this plant, you want to kind of keep it as cramped in their pots as possible. Now propagation you guys, so propagations, uh, there's two ways you can actually propagate this plant. Um, you can do it by division, dividing the plants up, or you can actually do it by leaf cutting. So in this case, if I wanted to propagate this plant, you would actually cut it right at the base of the, the leaf, the stem, the base right here, right where the node is. You would cut it right here. And since this plant is a little sensitive to water, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't recommend doing a, a water propagation with this. If it was me and I wanted to propagate, I would, like I said, I would cut right here. Let's see. I would cut right here. And I would actually put this, stick this in sphagnum. 
And also to encourage growth, I do use rooting hormone. So I would dip it into my rooting hormone and then just stick it on top of my sphagnum and allow it to uh, root that way. And you could also, like I said, divide the plant. Now this plant, even though it's very full and lush as you guys can see, and it's very compact, but I have a total of four plants. So if I wanted to, I could separate them and just have four miniature plants of this, or I could just maybe separate two from here um, if I wanted to. But I love the way that it looks. I love the fact that it, even though it's small, it's very compact. Um, and it kind of, it gives me that look that I really want in a plant, that fullness. So I really wouldn't personally uh, separate this at all, to be honest with you. Now, pests, as I made a mention to you guys, I've had this plant for a few months, so I haven't had any experience with uh, pests, but I do know that the most common pests for this particular plant would be mealybugs, spider mites, and of course, white flies. Now, you always want to double check your plants and check in the crevices of your plants because that's where the mealybugs and spider mites tend to form their webbing like around the, the nodes of the plants. So, you know, just inspect your plants from time to time. But if you do your pre-pest management, um, which is just basically surveying all your plants and taking a look at them and just just inspecting them and maybe spraying them down from time to time and do some form of um, pre-press pest treatment such as using your um, insecticidal soap and maybe spraying it down with water and then uh, water and use a neem oil solution. Um, I believe this plant will do fine. Um, but like I said, I have it sitting actually in my kitchen on my uh, window seal where it is receiving some morning uh, bright light and occasional some afternoon lights and like I said it's it's been pretty good and I've had it like I said for a couple of months and like I said it is a slow grower but since I've had it as you can see here I'm not sure it's rewarded me with these new leaves right here so this leaf here this new growth right here and then this this little one right here but just take a look at it you guys just admire the beauty of this plant it is really a beautiful plant I've wanted one of these for quite some time and I happen to luck up on it you guys I think I only paid um, three dollars for this plant so um, I think it was a good deal it was in very good condition when I saw it so I just grabbed it and I love it and I'm glad to have it in my collection so you guys can comment down below please let me know if you have um, one of these plants if maybe not this one maybe just the variegated cream and white one but like I said so many different varieties you guys and it's a very easy care plant you really can sit it and forget it um, and just water it and it'll let you know when it does need water the leaves too are also succulent like so they are very thick when they start feeling thin um, that is also another sign of this plant needs water. But please, by all means, do not hesitate by using that index finger and doing the knuckle test. If you guys watch me um, previously, I've explained to you what the knuckles represent. First knuckle being one inch of soil, second knuckle being the second inch, two inches of soil. And you just stick your finger in there and you can actually feel it. Um, but like I said, you want this plant to completely dry out, guys. But that pretty much uh, wraps up this Colorful Friday segment. I just wanted to do a quick video with you guys. And, you know, if you've been hanging out with me, I appreciate it. So just keep in mind, you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, definitely subscribe to this channel. I think it'll benefit you as well as me because we can grow together. Um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I appreciate any support you guys can give me. Enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. Bye.